Hey folks, this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly check out Facility 07. This is a game that's currently on Kickstarter right now, so it goes without saying that everything that you're about to see here is most definitely subject to change. The developer is going to stop by in a couple of moments and show me what the game is all about, but before we do that, I wanted to check out the game on Tabletopia, just to see what the general premise is all about. So, Facility 07 seems to support 2-6 to six players, it's for ages 16 and up, and the average play time is 45 minutes to 2 hours long. There's the Kickstarter link right here, and it says Facility 07 is a game of espionage, betrayal, and tongue-in-cheek humor that will keep you laughing even as your meticulously planned attack is countered by another player and you end up in prison. Sounds fun. Players take on the role of secret agents who explore Facility 07, the lair of the bumbling evil genius professional Professor Norwood, encountering lazy guards, high-tech agitry, and insidious traps, all while collecting precious data and searching for the mainframe. Players build the facility room, or facility room by room as they explore it, which means that there's a new game board every time you play. Players have full control over the length of each game at the start, Anywhere from 20 minutes to 3 hours if you wanted. This flexible playtime makes Facility 07 the perfect game for a party, a family gathering, or a casual game night. So, I'm not going to read the whole thing off to you, but in skimming the rest of it, it looks like there's going to be some take that mechanics. Um, I'm reading about truces, uh, sabotage, attacks and counterattacks. Um, the developer actually off this here uh, explained the game to me as sort of like a, a battle royale. So I'll be curious to see how a video game Battle Royale game is sort of transitioned into board game format with a spy theme, no less. So I guess without further ado, let's go ahead and see what the game is all about. Okay. Something's loading. That's good. Mm -hmm. Load it up. So this is currently on Kickstarter right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Is this a new experience for you? Have you done other Kickstarter games or is this <laughs> your first one? This is our first board uh, we've games. We've made are a, brave a lot new of world. games. Yeah. Ah, okay. So you're jumping in the deep end then. Yes. We're, yes. It's very deep. <laughs> for, for a lot. Yes, it is. We're we're doggy paddling and doing some yeah. flips. Once I've covered a ton of Kickstarter games, but I've never been on that side of it to know how mm. crazy it is. So. Well, we have a tour company. Uh, here in New Orleans, and so we have gotten familiar with business in the pa past few years, but mm. this is a much more, like, holistic thing. Like, you just mm -hmm. have to do, like, every aspect of wow. it, you know, right. with Kickstarter. So. Well, between the press and, like, it's just not just the Kickstarter. You've got to manage exactly. your, your audience. Manufacturing, fans. too. I mean, oh, that, that's right. Exactly. That has to be a pain. I mean, like, especially yeah. if you're getting, you know, a company in China involved or something overseas. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, totally. I can only really imagine. And, and people a... tend to think it's so easy just, like, uploading a profile to well, go fund me. Like, family members. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, drag before. and drop. Right. Nope. Right, right. <laughs> Exactly. We were we were ready for whatever it was, but oh yeah, it was a lot. That's yeah, crazy. and and now that you know this learning curve was really intense this first time around, and I think it's just gonna feel much more chill for the next time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. cool. <laughs> All right, so uh, how do you want to play this? Well, or how um, do you want to do this? I was just thinking like a quick five or ten minute explanation as to you know what the game's about, what a typical round might play like. Um, mm -hmm. I already. I already recorded, pre-recorded, like, a, a preview of it um, awesome. based cool. on the tabletop simulator store page. So, like, okay, I know how sure. many players and the average play time and all that, but I, I understand cool. it's sort of like a battle royale system, or I'm not... It, yeah, it, it can be. It's like, um... <laughs> okay, it, so yeah, imagine... So, mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, how deep do you want to jump into this? As deep as you want to go, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> so, yes, uh, it's a battle royale, but it's also semi-cooperative in that you have a mission, and your mission might actually be... Uh, well, okay, so there's two missions. There's the mission that everybody shares. Okay. Uh, you're all trying to find the mainframe in this evil genius's lair. Okay. So you're a bunch of iconic spies... Uh, and action you're, heroes. Yeah, and you're sneaking in and you're fighting guards and dealing with traps and crazy things happening. Okay. You get to the mainframe, you activate the self-destruct sequence. Mm. And at that point, your mission to the boys back in Langley or wherever you're reporting <laughs> to <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. has been, it's been completed at that point. And so, because, you know, it's, the place is going to blow up, the world is saved. Right. And mm -hmm. so now 
it's time to take out the competition. The uh, other agents okay. who helped you get it. It's not really, you're not necessarily trying to kill each other so much as trying to get the most points. And gotcha. sometimes killing each other is the way to make that happen. Right. And sometimes mm-hmm. maybe always. an alliance would be, but you, yeah. usually the thing is, you know that everyone is trying to get the most victory points, AKA data and get out first. Does so, killing someone actually remove them from the game, or is it just give them negative points at the end? There are some optional rules here, but the base okay. game, killing them removes them from the game. Okay, But gotcha. it's hard to die. Okay. Because before, like, it, it, initially, if you, when you... First, you have to daze them, then you do lethal damage, but they have an opportunity to give you one data and be extorted for their life a, a little bit. Yeah, basically, they trade their victory points for their life. Oh, yeah, one, not, one, one victory point, yeah. Yeah, and it's not, like, negotiable. You can't choose to just kill them. If they have victory points and they want to live. <laughs> and there are a lot of... So there are top secret cards and covert cards. Covert cards, a lot of those... Uh, you, you, they're the kind of cards that you keep face down. They're trap cards type things. And uh, when there, there's a lot that when you would be killed, this thing will happen. That, oh, that okay. like will kind of screw over the person that tried to kill you. I'm very fond of those. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love those. I love trap cards in any game I play. Totally. Yeah, so chock full. You mentioned private. Um, so there's public and private goals. I'm guessing the public goal is destroy the facility, get out. Are the private yes. goals then uh, you need to collect so much of this resource or you need to do this and this? Yeah, well, here they are. We've got top secret cards here. Ah, and these okay, are your secret objectives. Now, Neat. these are still being play tested. We know in. that there are, yeah, yeah, hit space to make it big. Cool. Uh, we know that these are going to be tweaked and changed. Uh, yeah. Uh, and we're still, you know, we're play testing this thing. No problem. Yeah, I've already, actually <laughs> already put that disclaimer out there. Any Kickstarter preview that I cover, yeah, it's always yeah. subject to change, just because well, yeah, things are you. always. You know. <laughs> so, but it's good that you can... these top secrets. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's always a balance until the last second. There's always mm-hmm. some sort of balance change. But the rest of the game is feeling real solid. These yeah, top secrets totally. are kind of the last piece that we're tweaking. But cool. uh, each card, you draw one in the beginning, or maybe, or you could draw two and pick the one that you want. Uh, we're big into options in this yeah game. that's cool. what we do with agents um, and but, this uh, you plus yeah, one data is victory points is that exactly yeah. okay. cool for each one you complete you get one victory point okay can you and, get more and, than one yes you could get two because each card has two so okay. do your best gotcha okay yeah sorry i keep uh, interrupting you it's, it's the oh no it's this the is... wonderful technology that we're dealing with right now yeah we can't this see each other my speak. life for the past year yeah it's <laughs> no everybody's life cues. right yeah yeah i'm not yeah, trying to be exactly. rude just for the record no me okay. neither <laughs> we're all th- we're all feeling the same way about just that, one of those sure. things right yeah right. 2020 problems you know <laughs> exactly totally hopefully just 2020 um so just basically where it says like kill would be changed to lethal damage okay yeah there's just a couple little tweaks we're thinking of but most the general idea is cool so here's one yeah you have to if you leave the facility with three gadgets equipped uh three pieces of equipment uh you know that are still there you then you've succeeded in this goal you get an extra data and you reveal that at the end of the game so after everyone's done no one can do anything else all that's left is flipping over these cards Mm -hmm. and hoping that you don't lose because Sometimes this flips the whole thing. Right. Totally. Okay. Because the thing get, is, yeah. usually your data, like, you know, during the course of the game, your data is out for everyone to see. Like, that's kind of, that's something that it has to be that way, that you yeah. have to be able to see every every other agent's data. But these are kind of like two in the bag that <laughs> possibly mm-hmm. that gotcha. nobody knows about. Last night I got one yeah. of two. So basically pu- public yeah. victory points that everyone can see. And then there's a hidden... At the end of yes. the game, you know, you can knock someone in, you know, you could go in the right. Game. Right. Okay. And cool. in, uh, I would say that the majority, like two thirds of the victory points or even more will be gained during the game. And this top secret is just going to put you over the edge. Yeah. Okay. If, uh, if you're close. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so we wanted to talk about the different types of cards. Sure. Um, so I'm just going to draw some. Okay. Oh, Great. good. Sometimes I get each type. No, not quite. Come on now, show me a gadget. <laughs> it shuffled too. There well. we go. Okay. Nice. 
So we got three uh, three card types here. We have action, or well, we'll start with gadgets. We have gadget cards. Um, these are reusable pieces of equipment. Okay. Uh, that you place on the table face up. You can use the one gadget card each turn. Uh, each well, I'm sorry. You can use each gadget card once per turn. Okay. And you can have up to three equipped. Okay. Uh, you can freely put these on and off. Uh, they're like your spy gadgets. It's it'll feel very familiar. The gadgets are. Uh, mostly very clear spy gadgets. Can okay. I can I start getting a little setup going down here? Like the, Yeah, the absolutely set one up. Yeah, that's okay. a great idea. Okay. Uh, then we have the action cards. These are played directly into the discard pile. You get to use them once and then it's over. Okay. Uh, but, you know, nobody sees these coming. The gadgets, everyone knows you've got them. Okay. So this is kind of a level of what's he really got going on in his hand. Gotcha. Uh, and these can do all sorts of stuff. Protect you from getting uh, attacked, uh, take out guards, help you with rolls. Lots of cool stuff. There's even weapons that you could just bust out for one. This so one's really gone. good. You oh, can get one victory point. Yeah, um, just being in a room with the guard before oh, nice. even the main break has been hacked. There's only one of these cards in the That's game. A nice one. We got a big deck here, so we can have some very powerful cards that only come up once per game. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it works out for balance. Cool. Uh, and then of course we have the covert card, which are the trap cards. So these are placed face down on the table next to your ops, uh, your agent card, and each one has a trigger. This one says, when another agent draws any number of ops cards. So whenever an agent draws some cards, you can flip this card over and say, not so fast. Okay. And in this case, you cancel their draw and draw twice as many ops cards yourself. Wow. So it screws okay. them over and you get a bunch of extra stuff. Gotcha. And there's lots of counters to actions and gadgets. But then there's also counters to those counters. So you can end up with a chain of cards, like four, I think, is the most we've ended up with. It's like a Magic well, the Gathering interrupt fest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it, yeah. Gotcha, okay. Uh, so okay. Alyssa, you've got a little thing for us down here? Yeah, I got a little setup. Wow, so okay. you have your top secret card here. We're hoping to have little player boards to put all this on. Um, Stretch goal. The stretch goal, yeah, and uh, your covert card would be here. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Stun gun. <laughs> a stun gun, yes. Captain right. Dirk. <laughs> we have Captain Dirk. <laughs> yeah, he's the manager. Uh, and then in the beginning, you get to choose between two different agents. I just took out three because I like them. Yeah, you tried um, to. Um, and you, unless your investigator Gizmo, who can have a lot of gadgets, he can have five. And most people can have three, and that's what it looks like when they're equipped. Cool. And there's the covert. So card. you get a special identity at the beginning of the game, and this will give you a special power of some kind. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And also, it Usually comes with. Thematically. Yeah, oh, very much so to the uh, agent that it's based on. But also, the, this, there's an RPG element. I mean, you're already seeing it with the gadget cards. It's like equipment that you put on. But right. we also have stats, which is like, I mean, betrays the, my roots of, you know, D&D &D <laughs> and all that. Nice. Um, I love me some stats. So you'll have a die, a colored die, and it'll be the same color as your character card or as your player token. Mm -hmm. And uh, you want to roll to fight someone so you'd roll your strength stat you need to roll equal to or less than that stat okay and if you do that you succeed so you want to roll ones ones always succeed gotcha are there ways so to improve your attributes yeah. through say gear or anything like that or is it absolutely okay. there are cards that will allow you to improve them one time there are ones that allow you to succeed when you have failed a roll ah. there are gadgets that will permanently increase uh, as long as you're wearing them a stat or a gadget there's one called the Tactical Turtleneck, which will let you choose any stat to increase by one every turn. And it's, it's really amazing. good. amazing. Oh, my one God. Of the best cool. cards in the yeah. game. Nice. Oh. Top three, anyway. Yeah. Okay, uh, okay this, so... The yeah. Secret Agent Fedora is pretty amazing, but it's also a little bit risky. This is a good for a gambler, because mm -hmm. when you get a victory point, you can roll insight. And if you succeed, you get an extra one. But if you fail, you lose that one. <laughs> ah, okay. Very dangerous. Gotcha. Yeah. Dangerous to yourself. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of uh, interesting mechanics that exist only on one card um, mm -hmm. in this game. That's why it's so easy to teach, because you don't really need to understand the intricacies. You just need to understand exactly. the basic rules. The cards tell you everything you mm -hmm. need to know. Nice. Okay. Uh, okay, so here we've set up a facility. This okay. is a sample build. We've got a couple of connection nodes, which will always be in the deck. 
Uh, we've got an entryway, which will always be there, the mainframe, and the prison. But other than that, we have some rooms from our deck of about 30-some rooms, 36, I think. Mm-hmm. Does the board so start off blank, uh, and then you build off of it, like exactly. like, like in Carcassonne? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the the only card in the beginning is the entryway okay. on the board. Gotcha. First off, whoops. And then the connection nodes are mixed in, and the mainframe is on the bottom. The mainframe will always be the last room Mm -hmm. that's revealed. Okay. And that's part of how we control the... You know, one thing I really didn't like about uh, the game Bang, which is a game that I was very influenced by Mm -hmm. uh, when I did the first draft of Facility 7, was that you would die in the very beginning of the game, Yeah. and that was that. Right. Player right. elimination is tough, you know? Mm-hmm. So we do have player elimination, but there's lots of safeguards, and also you can't die. It's impossible until the mainframe is hacked. Yeah, exactly, okay. because, of the, because of the truce that's happening between the agencies mm-hmm. in, until... So that means you... Is. Yeah, which means that you have a really good chance of preparing for mm-hmm. when the lethality begins, because you see the mainframe has been discovered, and you're like, okay... Time to uh, get away from the other agents right. and like get ready for battle. Gotcha. See if I can get a covert card that's about getting killed uh-huh. <laughs> or something. But uh, okay, so while before you have built the entire thing out, you know we've just got the entryway, right? Right. And if I was going to move into a new room, I would draw from the room deck. Let's just grab this card, gotcha. pop it down, and read, read off what it says. So the vault to open. At least two agents must end their turn here. Each agent present draws three ops cards and one data. May only be used once per game. Okay. One where so, you get to work together. Yeah, cool. rare. What so this is, is uh mm-hmm. yeah. What are these numbers and symbols on the very top here? Sure. So generally, those can be ignored okay. unless they're called upon by a card. Sometimes okay. the numbers come into play, deciding what direction a guard will move or maybe all odd-numbered rooms. Or locked down. Or... Yeah, or okay. punished in some way. Cool. Uh, and then the icons. Well, Alyssa, do you want to tell about the icons? Sure. The icons are just kind of a good way to add a glance, tell if this room has something positive or negative or both. Okay. Like uh, up here at the connection node, it's got a green file because you can get data there. And it's also got a red guard because it spawns a guard. Okay. So it's like a way to not have to read the room ability of every single room. Okay. At a glance. If it's got a lot of red, watch out. If it's got a lot of green, you don't really need to even read it unless you're trying to use it, you know? Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Uh, So when you reveal a new room, uh, you then draw from the event deck. Grab an event card, you flip it over, and read it out loud. So this is fun. Anonymous tip. You feed your handler the precise coordinates of a rival agent, and an anonymous call is made to Professor Norwood. Spawn a guard in the in a room adjacent to the agent of your choice. Okay. So you get to bring a guard in and uh, plop him down. And you could send that that, that rival agent to prison. Mm-hmm. And when you go to prison, guess what? You got to get rid of all but one gadget. Ooh, nasty. <laughs> and it's like just a speed bump. Like sending a timeout. Part of the facility than maybe they wanted to be in. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it could help you, honestly, a little bit. It can, yeah. Do- uh, the prison, mm-hmm. go ahead. Do guards automatically send you to jail, or is there like a fight that in- that entails first before? Oh, you they know, have- there's a fight. I figured. So, if you are dazed in the room with a guard, then you automatically go to jail. Okay. But if you guards only mess with you if you're trying to move through that room or use that room's ability. And if you want to use the room's ability, say, then you're going to fight that guard with either a strength roll or finesse to sneak past them, depending okay. on what you're better at. Cool. Yeah, if you succeed a strength roll, the guard is dazed, which means you punched him and he fell over. Uh, <laughs> being dazed is an important thing in this game. Yeah, it really is. There are, th- there are three ways to be. Uh, healthy, dazed, or dead. Gotcha. Uh, well. And it's important. <laughs> dazed yeah. is the buffer. Just like in real life. Just like in real dead. life. There's no in between. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we, there's a buffer in there. So when you get hit, if you get shot and you're not dazed, then you're fine. There's no way you can just die if you're not dazed. Okay. So that's nice. Cool. You get shot, you get dazed, you knock your token over, and while you're dazed, you're vulnerable to okay. cards that can steal your data, steal your cards, mess with you. In yeah. a lot of ways, you can also be sent to prison. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, okay. Well, I think that that was my fastest e- explanation yeah. of the Snow Is Heaven ever. So <laughs> that is that was pretty awesome. And so, like you said, the rooms will be revealed throughout the game. You will be trying to complete your private objective at that time. I'm assuming, or is that that kind the whole after- thing? Okay, it goes, throughout the whole you get game, it at like, the beginning. Like you might have, you know, you need to be. <laughs> last night, one of my objectives was you need to be the last agent who leaves the facility, and I had a covert card called Escape Plan, where you get to be fine if you are in the facility when it blows up because you ride off on a horse and you're okay. So yeah. I literally stayed in the facility until it blew up, and then I. Wow. Flipped over this card and I was fine. And I was <laughs> it's the only card that will let you do it. There's one card yeah. in the game, and sometimes you get that card in the first round of the game. Yeah, wow. I got it in the middle, and you hold on to it for it. the whole game. <laughs> wow, because exactly. it's that good. Uh huh. That's cool. Very there, useful. There's there a lot a of card limit? hoarding. Yeah, there's a hand limit of five, so you are constantly discarding if mm-hmm. you're not playing. It's really encouraged and... to just play mm-hmm. everything. Okay. And people are destroying your gadgets throughout the game. Sometimes mm-hmm. they might be forcing you to randomly discard a card. Um, and so it's hard to keep, it's hard to hold on to it. Sometimes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Nothing is permanent. Uh-huh. Yeah. But you can. I mean, you can. It's just not definite. It takes a little, takes a little longer. That's yeah. cool. What are the so the self destruct count, uh, I'm assuming, is the round tracker for yeah, the I facility? Yeah, pull that out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And... Whoever mm-hmm. it, whoever hacks the mainframe uh, is called the hacker. They put the tracker by them, and every time they have a turn after, so every round, uh, you know, once the mainframe is hacked, everyone will have six more turns. Gotcha. Okay. And I'll, you know, as the hacker, I'm in charge of yeah. lowering it. Neat. On my turn each time. Cool. And then, of course, we got the wild cards up here. So what do they which... do? Yeah, so wild tokens are part of our big commitment to make allowing you to make the game your game. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a, a, about 20 optional rules in the rule book. Oh wow! Uh, very short little like one right. sentence changes to the rules. Very easy to deal with. Uh, mm-hmm. But there's also the opportunity to create custom game variants or play the custom game variants that we uh, are going to be posting to so our like, social, yeah. and there'll be one in the rule book. Uh, that kind of changes everything. The game is going to ship with wild cards of each card type. Okay. Gadget, action. Wild card, gadget, action, whatever. And if you're playing, uh, let's say, Shark Attack, in which the facility is underwater completely and the guards are sharks. Oh, but okay. <laughs> a couple of special rules involved in that one. Right? Obviously, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, so yeah. maybe there'd be an action card in there, a wild action card, and in the rules for that game variant, it would say, if you draw the wild action card, it is this card, and it does this. Maybe it's like a... <laughs> ah. an air tank that you can like put in a shark's mouth. And that's it that's awesome. a guard, right? That's cool. So, no, that makes sense. <laughs> right. Totally. So so you can do this. You can make your own rules and the game is so robust. Robust. Yeah, yeah. It's resilient. You can't break it. I dare you to try. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I won't be able to on the 15 minutes that I've seen of it so far. <laughs> But, you know, I'll probably try it sometime down the line yeah, for sure. To be honest, you could break it. Okay? <laughs> yeah. We're very in- ingenuous, ingenious, yeah. So, Is so, there any reason why a player wouldn't just go after other players just to be a jerk? It, like, because they will, retribution will come back. Ah, to you. okay, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean, you, you, you're not... You're not going to get a. People definitely gang up on who's winning sometimes because uh, you kind of got to do that. Okay. Um, and they'll definitely gang up on someone who's trying to kill everyone. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> now that, that's, really, that makes sense. It really works itself out, the kind of conflict, yeah. because usually a, a, a team, the king, whoever has the most data, is the target, and everyone else is not fighting each other because why would you? Mm-hmm. These cards. You know, there's good cards, but you don't have an infinite number of them. You want to save your good stuff. Yeah, yeah. It counts. So unless they're really close to you, you're probably just going to be cool with each other, we've found. That's cool. Are there any yeah. special rules for a two-player game? I imagine with a, a group setting where, you know, the leader is always, you know, a target. Is there any difference with a two-player game compared to, say, a six-player game or what have you? A two-player game is like a duel. Okay. In that you know... 
you're watching the other guy the whole time. You mm-hmm. you know what he's doing. You have a pretty good idea of what he's up to. You're both countering, and it's it's like a back and forth chess match. Gotcha. It's, it's very intense. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> it's different I... than the four player, which is kind of where it really, uh, I think, is what it's built for four players. Okay, but it's. Or... Three. I mean, no, four. no, three, six. You can do anything you want, like I yeah. said, but mm-hmm. uh, it's a little different, more intense experience. <laughs> when you're dealing with more people, more gadgets, more stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's more, more exciting and kind of devil may care. Have... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's oh, more wow. laid back. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Are there any solo play variants that you guys are thinking about? Or... No, we have... I'd love to do that. I feel like we could figure out some kind of way. Uh, I guess this is very resilient. You know, we could. We could make that happen. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I was just curious. I mean, a lot of games nowadays do that. But, I mean, with a game like this, I mean, a a Battle Royale of one, it would be difficult (laughs) to design around. But, you know, maybe get so many victory points before you leave the facilities. Yeah, Yeah, something like that. Who knows? Yeah, we could see it. That's cool. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to explain all this stuff to me. I I hope that uh, the campaign succeeds for you. Thank you very much. I, I really enjoyed the challenge of doing it quickly. Thank, that yeah. was fun. Yeah. No matter what, we're getting Facility 7 out there, whether it's oh, yeah. this time or another time. Oh, that's but awesome. Let's hope it- and there you have it. Special thanks to Trevor and Alyssa for their very informative overview. Um, as you can see, the game is currently on Kickstarter right now. Uh, looks like the game has roughly 23 days to go as of the date and time of this recording. It needs about 10,000 more in order to reach its goals. So um, if you find this at all interesting, I'll put a link in the below description. You can click on that, head over here, and pledge your support. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. Take care.